Hello, I'm Carolyn Moore. I work for Arcadis and we're the world's leading company delivering sustainable design, engineering and consultancy solutions for natural and built assets. We have around 27,500 employees in over 70 countries worldwide. I'm based here in the beautiful Netherlands where our business is headquartered in Amsterdam, although I'm originally from Australia. As the Global Director for Cultural and Organisational Transformation, I'm responsible for our digital transformation strategy. I am going to tell you a little bit about how we do things differently at Arcadis. We take a very holistic and high engagement approach to digital transformation, and it's centred around a program that I lead called Expedition DNA. But before we get into that, uh, here's a fun fact. The first documented person described as an engineer was Imhotep, engineer to the, to the pharaoh Djoser and widely considered to have built the pharaoh's pyramid at Saqqara in around 27,000 BC. That's over 4,700 years ago. Engineering is an ancient profession and it has stood the test of time just like many ancient monuments, the pyramids, the Acropolis, the Great Wall of China. These structures still stand today because of the principles of engineering and they've been established a long time ago and tested throughout time to ensure that buildings, roads, infrastructure uh, and are designed and built safely and meet their intended purpose as places to work, live, and transport people and things. Government regulation of what can be built, where it can be built, its purpose, uh, and standards for construction and community engagement, etc., also help to reinforce these orthodoxies across our sector. Whilst these long established orthodoxies create consistency and safety, they also mean that change can be a slow process which is a very specific challenge when you are faced with the highly accelerated pace of digital transformation. Also, tried and tested principles of engineering leave very little scope for building a culture of experimentation. The significant implications that may come with failure in our sector, that buildings or infrastructure may be unsafe, fail or even lead to the loss of human life, mean that we need to have a low risk appetite in what we do by definition. By contrast, digital transformation requires a relatively high risk appetite, uh, a mindset of experimentation where mistakes are learned from through iterative development. It requires openness to change uh, and to the endless possibilities that digital offers. Additional to that context is that we're a very successful business there's not been a burning platform for change. The engineering sector has been computerised for design for quite a while. It's a highly regulated sector, as I mentioned before, with specific design standards. There's new software that provides additional and more accurate capabilities. To engage our business and our clients in digital transformation, we needed to set an ambition that would plant the flag for our aspirations. In 2018, our CEO, Peter Osterbeer, declared that Arcadis would become a digital front runner in our sector by 2021. In so doing, he signalled to our leadership, our employees, clients and our competitors that Arcadis was going to be ambitiously and rigorously pursuing a strategy of digital transformation. That we would be investing in upskilling our people, developing new technology, uh, making strategic acquisitions that enhance our current offering, targeting core new talent to bring new capabilities and skills into our business. And importantly, that we were going to challenge the cultural norms of our sector, do things differently, encourage experimentation and build an innovation mindset across the business. Yet an ambition even a stated ambition with all its implications like this one is not a strategy. Stating an ambition is relatively easy, but building a strategy for significant digital transformation in any legacy business, let alone a successful long-running business 
with strong organisational orthodoxies is extremely challenging. Before I delve into our people-led digital transformation strategy, let's take a quick step back and look at some of the context that informed how we built our high engagement employee-led approach. The thing is, digital transformation is unlike previous organisational changes. There are three main factors that distinguish digital transformation. I should credit Dr. Jeannie Ross, now retired research fellow at MIT for these. The first is that data is ubiquitous. It is being created at an increasingly rapid rate and we can access data pretty much anywhere, anytime. We, the second is that we have unlimited connectivity. We are networked and connected all the time, everywhere. This drives changes in customer and employee expectations and behaviour. And then thirdly, we have massive processing power. We can take the data that is being created and it can be processed and shared to build valuable insights. However, there's no single business that has the capacity and capability to process all of the data and make sense of all of the insights. So these three factors create a number of challenges for businesses looking to transform and build greater digital capability. The first is that this is happening at an ever accelerating rate of change. So businesses need to be able to pivot and adjust quickly. Next is that the desirable end state isn't known. These two factors together mean that digital transformation is a never ending process of evolution and disruption. Digital transformation poses fundamental shifts both in what businesses deliver to clients as well as how they deliver it. This means that businesses not only need to look towards developing new digital products and services, but also how they're organizationally structured and their ways of working to enable these products and services to succeed. Digital transformation, therefore, is about the creation of new business models and where they challenge traditional and dominant business models, organisational friction occurs. It is said that the organisational immune system kicks in and kills anything that is too different, too innovative, that threatens a traditional business. Businesses will need to evolve to become portfolio businesses with multiple business models. Business relationships also need to be reframed. Traditional competitors will need to collaborate to create a multiplier effect of value through the provision of digital product and services. This means that the business environment is more volatile and unpredictable than it was before. When it comes to traditional strategy planning and change management, this means change is non-lineal making traditional planning processes largely redundant. There is no longer a defined beginning, middle and end to transformation. The process needs to become iterative. There's no clearly definable end state when a business can say, okay, we've transformed now, job done. Transformation is now business as usual. The pace of change shifts and changes. It accelerates at certain points meaning that many strategies that follow traditional approaches are not adaptive enough to respond to these temporal shifts. In the face of ongoing, fast pace and never-ending transformation, stability management becomes equally important as change management, uh, both to embed change and also to manage the organisational energy required for the next fast-paced sprint. A successful strategy, therefore, needs to balance these two guiding factors, and I credit Donald Sull from the MIT Sloan School of Management for this. A successful strategy needs to balance providing sufficient guidance to the business to provide clarity in the direction of travel against sufficient flexibility to enable the business to pivot and respond to unexpected disruption. The business needs to understand how to best make decisions, allocate resources, and prioritise activities whilst also seizing and capitalising on emergent and unexpected opportunities. It's very much within this context that we at Arcadis developed our program for high engagement 
an employee-led digital transformation, which is called Expedition DNA. The program itself is developed around a framework of the four realities of digital developed by our academic partners at Vlerick Business School, and I credit Professor Stein Vien with the development of this framework. The four realities of digital framework provides sufficient clarity and guidance to our digital strategy, whilst also embedding an iterative approach to content creation, engagement and delivery to enable it to flex and respond to our rapidly changing environment. We established Expedition DNA just three years ago with the following goals. To create a digital innovative mindset across our cadres, remembering the specific challenges I've outlined in doing so within an industry sector that has strong organisational orthodoxies. To inspire employees to develop their sustainability savviness and apply this to their work is our view that for a business to have a successful transformation, sustainability must also be at the core of what we do. Developing organisational influencers who embody the spirit of our strategy and the Expedition DNA program and equip them with the skills necessary to drive organisational change. Develop applied capabilities in digital and sustainability across the whole of our cadres. The important notion here is that the capabilities are applied, not just conceptual, theoretical, or understanding of a new framework. To ensure the changes that we expect as an organisation are embedded across the business, they must be tangible. This, is, this also enables us to actively bring our clients on the journey and help them with their digital readiness. Finally, it's all about building the movement and creating a global community regarding digital. To build the movement, we need to have active and positive engagement, influencers who are equipped and enabled to drive change, and a common understanding of the goals we are trying to achieve as a business. This is, this is the nexus between our business strategy and our digital transformation program. And our promise to our people is that we will equip them for their future meaningful careers throughout this program. Additionally, the program was not just about the here and now. Whilst we want our people to continuously improve, standardise and automate repetitive tasks in our current business model and within our current projects and services, we also want to inspire them to think beyond tomorrow, to consider the endless possibilities that digital presents to us in new services, solutions and business models. This is why our program follows the infinity loop. The program is forever iterative and continuously improving. Furthermore, the program has points of engagement that diverge and converge. The first part of the program is called Basecamp. This is a gamified online platform that is open to all Arcadis employees. The purpose of Basecamp is to build critical mass of engagement in digital to build awareness through establishing a baseline of understanding built upon a common language of digital established across the business. Basecamp provides our people with over 30 hours of high quality professional development delivered in a uniquely gamified way that builds engagement and encourages ongoing participation. For these reasons, Basecamp is represented here as a point of divergence in terms of engagement. It is open to all Arcadians to participate in. Basecamp is entirely voluntary for employees. This is a conscious decision we've made as a business because we want our people to actively engage with digital, to be intrinsically motivated, to continuously learn and apply those learnings in their work. By building engagement in this way, we are also able to identify our most enthusiastic employees. The next phase of our program are expeditions. Once employees complete base camp, they can apply to join an expedition. This is a 10-week intensive program that focuses on building applicable skills in digital sustainability and transformation ambassadorship. We bring together world-class subject matter experts, sector leaders, academics, organisational leaders and others to inspire our people and provide them with deep learning. This is not any old program where you sit in a classroom and listen to endless lectures from experts. 
It is highly experiential, using unique approaches to learning to develop both technical skills and human-centred competencies. During the program, participants also work in teams on a business simulation. This program is a nexus between skills development, skills application, and an engaging sense of fun that binds each cohort of participants together with a common goal to create an impactful ripple effect across the business. As we're focusing on building strategic ambassadorship during the expeditions, this is demonstrated here as a point of convergence for engagement. We take focused cohorts of employees and intensely deepen their knowledge and capabilities to influence others. We build a commitment culture within every cohort so that they support each other and they keep each other accountable for driving impactful change back into the business. This leads to the final element of our program, the ripple effect. This is the impact that we want to see back in the business. Our goals are to build the movement, but we also want to see that translate into more digital work, committed relationships with our clients where we co-create solutions and engagement across our sector to, to tackle societal problems. Once again, we want our engagement approach to diverge and our ambassadors to have as much impact as possible by amplifying each other's efforts, engaging as many people and clients as possible, sharing their learnings as deeply as possible and genuinely building the movement for change. Let's now turn to see some of the impact this program has had at Arcadis. Of our 27,500 employees, nearly 18,000 are already voluntarily participating in this program. This, of course, would not happen if the quality of the program and the facilitators providing it weren't highly valued by our participants. So you can see there that the satisfaction score of our sustainability content, for example, and facilitators is four and a half out of five. This is indicative of the program overall. Importantly, we're seeing this translate into an increase in digital work. So our people are able to confidently engage our clients in the digital journey. They're also impactfully building the movement internally by engaging more and more employees in different ways. Digital weeks are weeks that are organized as demonstrators and educational opportunities by employees who have been through the program. We can see that they have managed to voluntarily engage an additional 11,500 employees in the digital movement this way. A further 21,800 employees are engaged through our digital communities of practice and 98% of our ambassadors have actively encouraged others to join the digital journey. In this sense, Expedition DNA has created a self-perpetuating program of engagement and digital transformation. The benefits of the program exceeded our intended goals in other ways as well. So we've seen employees who go through the program have significantly lower levels of attrition within the business. And it has directly and positively impacted our employer brand by building significant traction on social media. These are just some of the ways that we have realized uh, our digital transformation. And there are many other benefits that I won't list here because I'm really interested now to engage in the conversation with you about employee-led digital transformation. Many thanks to Carolyn for that presentation. I can see that Carolyn now has very swiftly joined, probably the quickest we've had a, we've had a speaker from you, so I thank you for that. Great efficiency, uh, and, and thanks for that great presentation, Carolyn. How are you today? Oh, well, thanks, Chris. And uh, you know, you can't have digital in your in your job description without being able to switch on a microphone fairly rapidly. <laughs> it's true. It's true. But you'd be very surprised. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, thank, thanks again for the presentation. I'm really glad that you're you're able to join uh, for a quick Q and A session. We've had some pretty interesting questions come through, so um, I'll I'll dig right in and, and get going and first up uh, a comment on the name expedition dna um it's it's a great name so um some people pleased with um that aspect of it the first question that came through quite early on was to do um with your comments around upskilling employees um and uh, thanks for this question amelia h what were the major challenges when beginning your journey of upskilling 
the upskilling employees? Uh, I would say the first challenge was actually, at least in our business, was actually presenting that there's a need for upskilling. You know, as I said in the in the presentation, um, there wasn't a burning platform for change. So being able to confidently present uh, a need to upskill people uh, and and demonstrate that there's a genuine need to do so uh, in that context was was a, a genuine challenge. And and the way that we did that was um, through a combination of inside and outside in uh, your research. Uh, so we obviously looked at uh, the sector, where the sector is moving, uh, who's new new entrants into the sector, how they were doing things differently. Um, importantly, and I would recommend this to anyone, uh, have a good academic partner to work with. We work with the Vlerick Business School uh, in Belgium, and they have been crucial uh, you know, in advising us about trends, what they're seeing in terms of the latest research. So having a really great academic partner also makes all the difference in, in making that uh, connection between your business strategy and the need to shift and upskill people as well. Sure, nice answer. And that uh, goes on quite nicely to the, to the next question from Fabio. And thanks thanks for the question, Fabio. Uh, the first part of the question is, when was Expedition DNA established? Um, and the second part, which you've just touched on there, was did you use any uh, external help? Uh, again, two great questions. So uh, the first is it's been around for just under three years. So we established it in 2018. Uh, so we're in our third year uh, now. Uh, and within the program, we actually apply what we teach in the program. So uh, the four realities of digital, um, which was established as our preferred framework with Lyric Business School. Uh, one of the core aspects of that is the need to have strong ecosystem partners. Uh, and you know, we have built that into the program. We've had uh, ecosystem partners in terms of we work with to build the online platform. We also work with a range of uh, ecosystem partners who provide facilitation uh, and other support uh, in the program as well. Uh, and again, it, it ensures that we're able to access uh, world leading uh, information, uh, new ways of delivering content and engaging people in the program, and we're ever evolving it as well. So we have a combination of uh, subject matter experts, uh, academics, uh, as well as people who um, are there to support the program delivery. Nice. Um, and then tying in with the, the first question about the challenges of upskilling employees, I guess this is kind of related. Um, did you meet any resistance um, from the workforce on, on joining the program or, or Expedition DNA? For sure. And I would say it's, it's, it's human behaviour. The natural response to change is resistance. Of course. Um, so, you know, of course you do meet resistance. Um, I, would, I would say we've been incredibly lucky we've had uh, very significant executive sponsorship, as you saw from our chief executive officer, but also from our entire executive leadership team. Uh, and I would say without that strong executive leadership, it would have been a lot harder. Um, what makes me, as the sort of program director for this program, uh, always very fulfilled about how the program is going is when we have someone that comes into it that's quite sceptical and leaves very much committed and becomes a, a very strong ambassador for the business. And I can guarantee every time we run an expedition, there's been at least one person in that expedition that's come in uh, with the with the genuine desire to disprove everything. <laughs> and and they've, they've most, most times they've become some of our most committed ambassadors uh, yeah. for change. And it's really seeing their learning journey uh, and being so transformative for them uh, that makes it such a fulfilling job to have. Yeah, nice, good answer. Uh, and then another question in, uh, future expectation. What is the next wave you expect in culture development? That's yeah, question. fantastic question. Actually, it's given me goosebumps, to be honest, because <laughs> that's, that's the perfect question. So I would say we, we've just started our second wave of this where we're really um, increasing the sustainability element uh, of the program. Yeah. Uh, and... You know, I, I said in the presentation that we do believe in sustainability being at the core of everything we do. Um, if you're not a sustainable business and you're not promoting what you're doing sustainably, um, it's really hard to then uh, sort of tie that in with digital products that are that are lasting. Uh, so I would say, you know, 
we're amping up the sustainability element at the moment. That's the current wave. The other one, which has always been part of the program, and I didn't mention in the presentation, but we will also be um, scaling this up uh, even further, is inclusiveness. Uh, and you can see this is a trend uh, amongst many organisations at the moment that there's a there's a strong um, compulsion in three areas: digital, inclusiveness, and sustainability. Uh, and you know, we we're actively working to bring those three things together. And I do think that that's a third wave. I think these are the three most significant corporate challenges uh, of the 21st century. Uh, how do we how do we uh, produce and service people in a more inclusive way. When you do that through digital, it democratises a lot of things, but how do you also do it in a sustainable way uh, that you know, increases equity and things like that in the market? So um, that's that's what I foresee. Uh, and, again, that comes from trends both internally and externally to our business that we've you know, done quite a bit of research on. Nice, nice, good answer. And then uh, a question around kind of employee buy-in here. Did you compensate the participating employees with any other kind of non-financial incentive other than the opportunity to learn? No, <laughs> that's a very short, sharp yeah. answer. We, we really uh, wanted people to intrinsically buy into this. Uh, yeah. And you know, so first of all, they have to do it voluntarily. Uh, yeah. Secondly, we are a time and materials business predominantly, which means that you know, as a consultancy, we uh, we hire out our people by the hour. Uh, so, you know, in terms of making it voluntary, our our, our people also had to find the time uh, yeah. amongst their billable time to to engage with the program. Uh, yeah. And you know, it, and it really is you know the, the fact that we've just built momentum around it through a lot of peer to peer engagement. Uh, yep. that has led to this uh, success of the program. We don't actually compensate anyone in any way, including uh, in terms of their hours. So uh, yep. it really is a high engagement approach. That's really good, and especially given the the, the figures that you shared for it as well. Um, really, really good uptake on that. And then finally, got one, uh, one, more, one more question uh, here. Uh, and that's all we, we'll probably have time for. Um, how has remote work impacted culture? Do you have any insights or offering on that on that area? Yeah, I, look, again, a really great question, a really pertinent question as well. And you can see different kinds of impacts. I'm not the kind of person that says it's good or bad, but yeah. you can see a range of different impacts. So one of yeah. one of them is uh, that it has very much democratised people's access uh, yeah. to to learning opportunities like this. Last mm -hmm. year, we actually saw the, the largest uh, single percentage increase in engagement in the program, in the online part of the program. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, this year, when we've sort of restarted our expeditions, we're doing them in a virtual way. Uh, and, you know, to be fair, a lot of the feedback that we've had is, this is a really amazing program. We'd love to do it face to face, because I think people still really want to have that resonance with each other in person. So mm -hmm. you, you have, you know, a range of responses uh, to you know, how lockdown <laughs> has impacted that, uh, impacted the program, but it's also impacted culture in many other ways as well. I think um, you, know, you can see different waves of people feeling quite fatigued. I think in terms yeah. of transformation, it does make it more fatiguing. It makes it a lot more challenging to connect with people uh, in a global environment than when you're able to all get together in an office as well. So yeah. there are there are challenges and there are uh, positive outcomes uh, to the current lockdown. Uh, I'm personally hoping that uh, we can start to see people face to face again uh, yeah. very soon. I, you know, I'd love to come and join you, Chris, face to face very soon yeah. and, and, and meet your colleagues from all around the world. Yeah, definitely. Well, that's that's all we've got time for, Carolyn. Thank you so much um, for your presentation and, and for taking the time out to join for the Q and A as well. Uh, some really nice insights offered, and as you say, uh, hopefully we're moving back to um, a roadmap of in-person events, and perhaps we can get you on our European event once we uh, resume play on that side. I'd love to, and thank you so much for having me, and have a great day.